Welcome to part 3 of the Matplotlib series. In this tutorial, you learn about scatterplot. I will also show you advanced techniques so that you can get the most of this plotting method. A basic definition of a scatterplot is that it is a plotting method that displays our data using markers, and that can be circle, square, triangles, or any geometrical symbol. And why is this plotting method so useful? For the simple reason that it is very good in showing the relationship between variables in our dataset. If you look at this example on the right side, we have two variables that are strongly correlated, and in this case, we can fit a polynomial function on it. But scatter plots are not only useful on regression problems, it can also indicate if our data is clustered. What else can we do with this plotting method? Scatterplot has this special feature which is the possibility to display one additional variable on our plot. And the way this additional variable is represented is via a modification on the marker, and it can be the color, shape, or size. Let's take this example on the right side and map a third variable on the color of the marker. This is quite nice, but now I cannot tell you if the blue color corresponds to a low or a high value. And this is another important information for you. The range of the values of the additional variable, in this case mapped to the color of the marker, do not correspond to the values in the y-axis. If you want to display the reference values of this third variable, so the variable that you just added to your scatter plot, you can add a color bar. And now we can see that the blue color is related to the low values and the red color is related to the high values. And as I mentioned, we can also display this additional variable as the size of the marker. And this kind of plot is called a bubble plot. And using this bubble plot style, we can easily see how the third variable is mapped to the dot. The larger is the value, the bigger is the diameter of the dot. Okay? And if you want, you can also combine the bubble plot with the colors as well. And this is what we are going to learn in this tutorial. Let's jump to our Jupyter Notebook. I want to remind that you can access all the notebooks of this course in the GitHub account that you can find in the video description. And in case you have any issue to understand comments or even concepts during this tutorial, you can refer to the previous videos on NumPy and Matplotlib that are available on the channel. The libraries we are going to use are Matplotlib and NumPy. And this chunk of code is only to improve the quality of the graphs generated by Jupyter Notebook. In order to create a graph, we need to have data. Let's then create a random array with values between 0 and 1 for both x and y. Then we use numpy, let me just write on both all together. So numpy, use the random module and the rand function. How many points? In points, in this case 200. And remember that we are following the explicit method to create a graph. Therefore, we need to manually create the figure, plotting area, and the plot itself. Let's create the figure. That's going to be plt, so that's pyplot, figure. Then on this figure, we add an axis, and the x again is the plotting area. So that's going to be on this figure, we add a subplot. Let me just give some room here. Now, if you want, we can plot it. And this is our plotting area. That's basically the object which we receive our plots. And so far, the only plot method that we know is the plot. And here, we provide x and y. If I plot it, we get this representation of our data as straight lines connecting consecutive points, and that's not what we want. If you want to represent our data as a scatter plot, we only need to change the plotting method from plot to scatter. Then we get our scatter plot. Let's check which parameters this scatter method takes. Just click anywhere inside the scatter method, then press Shift Tab. Then the doc string will open. Now you see that the X, Y, then there are a bunch, S, C, marker, and so on. If you want to see what is the description of each parameter, you just scroll down, then you get all of them here. So S means, uh, let's see, the size of the marker, C is the color, and so on. Let's take S, C, there is also something which I like quite a lot, 
let me find it here which is the edge colors then we just type edge color let's use black then we saw that C is the color let's use gray and we also have size so for size we have S here yeah, let's say 100 if you want to increase the size of the marker we only need to increase the number which is assigned to the S parameter let's say 150 now I find this gray actually quite dark let's now add the alpha parameter we saw that in the last video I would type 0 0.6 then I think yeah then that's nicer okay what we are missing we can also give labels so I will just edit here and we finally have a nice graph let's learn how to change the marker I will copy the code we just did together I will open the doc string again and show that there is a parameter called marker I will take it comma marker equals to and what we have to assign to this parameter is always a string okay and I want to show you two different ways to find the marker you want to use the first one is using the markers from the matplotlib just click this link here on the right side is the symbol that you want to use for instance let's say this x here this cross I only need to take this string on the left side I will just copy it here and paste this string here now we change the marker from dot to this special x the second method is to use the latex symbols I also have the link here for you and the way it works is the following LaTeX is not only for markers you can use that for annotation and to write very nice math expressions but for markers you just need to scroll down to the end of the page and here it's gonna teach you how to use it and remember what I told you every time you want to set a marker it's gonna be a string right and that's basically a tip for you I'll just copy this code here come back to our Jupyter notebook let's now paste it okay what's going on what you need to do you only need to delete what is in between and now add a latex symbol okay how to read this funny thing here this r means that this string is a raw string and the dollar signs means that we're expecting a latex symbol or a latex expression let me come back to the latex expression and let's take for instance this spade I will just copy come back here paste if I run it we get our very nice spade and if I want to change the color that's the same let's change from gray to green and that's it if you want to increase you can also increase it and just make sure you got it when you want to use the LaTeX symbol the LaTeX code or expression should come as a string and this string should be raw and it should also come in between this dollar sign right let me just add another one for instance pi now our data is represented by the pi symbol and if you want I'm not sure if it's very useful but you can type anything you want let me just type the first three letters of my name as I said I'm not sure if it is very useful then let me just come back to the pi symbol and those are the most common way that you can add markers to your scatter plot and now that we know the basics let's learn how to add an additional variable to our scatter plot let me just paste a code here because I don't want to waste our time and then I will run it for you and explain it a bit that's a scatter plot we know it already every parameter you see inside the scatter method you already know so the edge colors alpha c which means color s which means size and now we have a different function so I use the link space method from numpy just to get even number from minus 2 to 2 using how many numbers 100 and now I only added this random let's say component of the y variable just to get this random behavior if not let me just comment it 
I would get like a perfect X square curve. All right. So let me just bring it back. Okay. Now we need to create a third variable or our additional information. Let me just type here additional variable. I'm going to call it Z. And this variable is going to be, let's say, x power 4 or power 2, 4 is too much. Now, if I want to map this new array to the color itself, it will no longer be gray, but Z. Now, if I run it, we can see that the new information or the new variable is mapped to the color of our marker. In this particular case, I can choose if I want to show the color bar or not, because the Y and the Z values are basically in the same order. But as soon as I increase the exponentiation of this Z variable, for instance, let's now give 4, then the order of magnitudes of Y and Z are completely different. Then the best way to show this information to the user or to the person who wants to see our graph is to add a color bar. And how to add this color bar? So the color bar is not inside the plotting area, it is actually on the figure itself. Then we need to use the figure object and call the color bar. If we inspect the color bar method, we see that there is this parameter called mapable. And if I check what that means, so let me just go down. It says that it has something to do with image, but what is that about image? Okay, if you think about X and Y, this is already represented on our graph, and the only information which is not represented is the C, right? Which means the color. How to get that into our color bar? We just need to assign this plot to a variable. We normally call it IM, short for image. Then we provide this image to the color bar. Now, if I run it, we finally get our color bar. We can also set a label to this color bar. How to do that? Let me then set this object to a variable called C bar or color bar. And on this object, I want to set a label. And let's call it third variable. Okay, it's too small. Then let me just take the font size. I want to use the same size. Then that's going to be, yep, that's nice. There is only one information I want to tell you before going to the next subject, which is the color map. Look that we did not choose the color map and by default, purple was assigned to a very low number and yellow to the highest number, right? What if I want to change it? If I again inspect this function or the scatter method, there is a parameter called cmap. I will just take it. Let's just put it here. And this trick I gave in the last video, every time I don't know what to add, let's just type something that we, I'm sure that it doesn't exist. I always type my name. It's going to raise an error. But Python, you give me all the possibilities for this color map. And here you can try everything on your own, but there is one that I liked a lot, which is the jet. I will just copy it. So jet is the color map I like to use. I just replace my name by jet. Then I run it. Now you see that blue is assigned to low numbers and red is assigned to high numbers, like temperature. All right, if I want to switch, make red to be assigned to low numbers and blue to high numbers, I just add underline R, which stands for reversed. Then let me run it. And that's it. Now, the only missing point is the bubble plot. How to create a bubble plot? I will again use a snippet just to save us some time. We have two variables, X and Y. We need to create a third one. I'll create again a variable called Z and that's going to be X power 2. Okay. Now, I will no longer provide Z to the color, but to the size of my marker. So here I'll provide Z and the color is going to be gray. And look, the points are very, very, very small. 
what we can do, we can scale it. So now I can take, for instance, 100 and multiply by this array. Let's see. Okay, that's a bit better. Let's use 300. Maybe let me just increase a bit, 500. All right, this is our bubble plot. If you still want to have the color on top of the bubble plot, guess what? You delete the gray string and now you also provide the Z array. If I run it, now we have our bubble plot plus the color mapped to our marker. And that's it. Now you can take full advantage of a scatter plot, not only to find out correlation in your data set, but also to better present the data to someone else. Then, thanks so much for watching and let me know which plotting method you want me to cover in the next video. Bye bye.